Hey students, we are going to talk now about confidence intervals in R. Before we get on to any programming, I want to talk about the basics of confidence intervals. So, uh, we have point estimates, for example, the sample mean, and generally these are not considered sufficient to understand where the true mean of a population probably is. It's just one instantiation of a random variable, and we know there's a random process behind it, and we would like to use more of the process rather than a single instantiation of it to try to understand where a true parameter value is going to be. Uh, last lecture, uh, lecture six, at least during the summer, uh, because I'm probably going to be using these uh, lecture videos again in the future, um, I was talking about computational methods for uh, learning about where parameter values are likely going to be, and those were non-parametric methods in that they are um, working even without making very many assumptions about uh, the data generating process. For example, we're not assuming that the data actually came from a normal distribution or anything like that. We just say there's a mean or there's a standard deviation or a median, and that's pretty much it. After that, we can um, use those uh, bootstrapping procedures uh, as we like. And uh, those methods are fairly robust, uh, where robustness is basically how well a procedure is working uh, even when underlying assumptions are not holding. But the thing is, sometimes we want a procedure to be powerful. And power is the ability of a procedure to detect effects or to uh, have like small confidence intervals and thus have precision in their estimates. Uh, so uh, we would like to have powerful methods and often powerful methods are parametric methods. Parametric methods are methods where uh, you are going to assume more about the data generating process where basically you know the process except for some parameters. Non-parametric methods uh, don't necessarily assume that, whereas parametric methods do. And when you're able to say that you know a process up to some parameters, for instance, you know, you know your data came from a normal distribution, but you just don't know what the mean and standard deviation are, um, or you know your data came from a Bernoulli distribution, but you just don't know what the parameter P is, you're able to get more power out of your uh, methods and be able to say more about the population, although that comes at the cost of assuming more about your population, and it's possible that your assumptions are incorrect. So we're going to be studying these uh, uh, non-parametric, uh, no, these parametric methods, which uh, both uh, have the advantage of likely being more powerful and additionally uh, they are going to uh, be just simple math formulas so one advantage to that is a the results are highly replicable and there's no uh, magic random seed or magic number that's responsible for the results that you get so someone else with the same data we'll get the exact same results under the exact same assumptions. Um, additionally, um, uh, they are much easier to do because the reason why we're able to do those uh, powerful bootstrapping methods and such is because we have fast computers. And because we have fast computers, we're able to do it without too much of a sweat, but you could imagine that once upon a time, we didn't have computers like this, and because we didn't have computers like this, statistical inference could take a long time, especially if you're going to try to do something like bootstrapping. Okay, so we're going to talk about confidence interval, uh, confidence intervals. A 100 a 100c percent confidence interval is an interval or region constructed in such a way that the probability the procedure uh, used to construct the interval uh, contains the true parameter of interest is c. Now, this is not the same thing as saying that the probability that the parameter of interest is in the confidence interval. That is not the same thing. Um, basically, the reason why it's not the same thing is because once you compute a confidence interval on data and get an interval that consists of two numbers, that interval is not random. The uh, parameter of interest isn't random. So the parameter of interest either is or is not in your interval. One of those things is true. So the probability that the parameter is in the interval is either one or zero, and you just don't know which. 
So we don't talk about the probably the the interval contains the parameter, but rather the probably the procedure manages to capture uh, the parameter value. So it's a statement about the quality of the procedure rather than the location of the parameter. Okay, uh, so C is the confidence level. Uh, smaller C results in intervals that capture the true parameter less frequently. At the same time, though, there's less, in a sense, uh, parameter values to consider. On the other hand, a larger C, you are going to have a larger interval, but that interval is more likely to have actually captured the true parameter value. Um, so you can say that smaller C yields intervals that are more precise and uh, less accurate, whereas uh, larger C yields intervals that are less pr precise and more accurate. Uh, a lot of confidence intervals take the form estimate plus or minus margin of error, or estimate plus or minus MOE. So we have an estimate, and then we're going to add and subtract the margin of error to form the upper and lower bound of the interval. And such an interval is probably an equal tail confidence interval because the probability that um, the true parameter is either too large or too small, um, those two probabilities are the same. So the probability that the true parameter is too large is the same as probably the parameter is too small, uh, hence equal tailed. Um, these are also symmetric intervals because uh, they're symmetric around their estimate. Um, so uh, for estimates of parameters from non-symmetric distributions, um, an equal tail confidence interval may not be symmetric around the estimate. Uh, for example, intervals for uh, the population standard deviation from a normal distribution or the population variance, that's usually what's referred to, um, those are not symmetric around their estimate. Um, and so also, it's not always the case that an interval is two-sided. Sometimes an interval is one-sided, where you have the estimate plus the margin of error or the estimate minus the margin of, error, margin of error, and not both. And one-sided intervals are of interest if, for instance, you don't really care about errors in one direction. For example, if you're studying stocks and you're interested in, in the return of a stock, you're probably okay with um, uh, under-guessing how much the stock goes up, but you don't want to be wrong about how far the stock can go down. So you're going to have a one-sided interval that basically gives you a lower bound on the return of the stock. Um, and uh, that's that's what you want. All right. Uh, so that's it for a basic description of how confidence intervals are working. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about how you can construct those intervals um, by hand in a sense where you're just... You're not using any functions that just give you the interval. You're just uh, using functions to build intervals like computing all of these numbers and then uh, getting an interval out of the end. All right, so that's it. I'll see you in that video.